Hey, this is Cameron. Welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. We've got something really cool planned today. Today we're gonna to be joined by Charles from Ivy Organic. Let's get busy. Let's get busy. Well, this is so exciting. If you're like me and you've been on YouTube looking at gardening channels, you for sure have seen Ivy Organic. You've seen Charles painting those tree trunks, but also grafting things yeah. and uh, doing, they've got now fertilizer. So right. uh, Charles, why don't you tell my audience a little bit about Ivy Organic and... So Ivy Organics was founded on the gardening concept known as whitewashing, which is simply painting your trees. And the value of painting your trees is more so a winter phenomenon, protect, protecting your plants from winter sun scald, even though we predominantly sell our plants in the summer as people are buying their plants in the spring, bringing them home to their home gardens, and they're seeing their plants burn and die due to summer heat. So it kind of insulates from winter sun scald, summer sunburn, and also offers protection from insects and rodent damage as well. Now the cool thing about this is, this is one, Omri Organic Listed, right? Correct. Okay, so and we're gonna get into some of the ingredients and why this is a better option than what was has normally been done. When I started out many years ago, I watched Tom Spellman, as you've heard me say before on YouTube, and he would talk about how you need to whitewash your trees to prevent all these things, sun scald, sunburn, pests getting in. And right. so we take interior paint, mix it 50-50 with the water, and paint these trees white. And yes. Actually, it's done pretty good in the orchard. That's what I've used up until this point. Correct. Because it's kept a lot of that stuff off, even though we had this crazy heat wave this last year, 115 degrees out here. And 117 near my house. Insane. Yeah, yeah, it was bad. Most people, it's almost like mulching where the average person doesn't know about whitewashing, they don't know about mulching, they are very clueless about feeding their trees. Correct. And so we've seen these trees actually really thrive and really not experience too much damage because of sunburn. I'm going to show in the video a little bit later some of the examples where we did see sunburn, incidentally where I didn't whitewash, and I should have been. Um, so it's neat though that we're able to move away from that latex interior paint that was made for the inside of houses. I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> so when it comes to paint, 99% of the research out there, you research whitewashing, and then what do I do to whitewash my tree? It's going to redirect you to paint. And then they're gonna talk about latex paint, indoor paint, outdoor paint, what do I use? Yeah. And all the research is surrounded by that. Do you happen to know the difference between indoor, outdoor, latex paint? Like which one is better, why? Yes, and I do because I bought exterior paint and put it on my very first trees and freaked out when I found out the difference. Okay. The exterior paint has uh, fungicides and other and, sides. And algicides, which are plants, yeah. Which are designed to keep plants off of your paint. Yeah, yeah. Um, at more of a microscopic level. But to preserve the wood yeah. at the end of the day. But it also, I mean, de depending on how young the plant is or if it's green tissues, you're putting on algicides, which are plant killers on yeah. your plants, it's causing you know an opposite effect. But the, one of the big differences is also between indoor and outdoor is there's more chemicals. It's more potently harmful, the outdoor paints compared to the indoor. So you'll notice that there's a drive towards using in indoor latex paint versus the outdoor stuff, which is more harsh. Mm. But at the end of the day, they're both toxic. And that's the reason for doing whitewashing organically. And that was the birth of the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard back in like 2015. What intrigued me and the reason I, you got my attention, the reason I had to come here <laughs> is you've been whitewashing your trees for like a decade and beyond. Um, I've noticed in all of your videos that you've been sharing and you talk about all these different lessons and you sometimes barely talk on the whitewashing concept, but I noticed in the background, all of your trees are painted white and I'm like, this guy gets whitewashing. I got to get over here. And so thanks for inviting me over. Yeah, this has been fun. And so we've been walking around uh, doing some of the whitewashing, identifying some issues. And so I'd like to walk around and show you guys um, some trees that it's been done well on and some trees where either it didn't didn't do well or needs to be reapplied and we're gonna maybe Or we'll, you didn't even do it at all. At all. Yeah, and, and so we saw that damage as well. And we saw the, I got what I deserved on that one. <laughs> so let's go walk around and we'll take a look. Let's do it. How long has this tree been here? Two years. Okay. So this is really. So you planted, you immediately whitewashed, you took the central leader down to create these lower branches. Immediately. That created. Okay. Yeah, upon planting. But it still has an open canopy that'll hopefully be full before the end of the year. Yeah. All of my apples are growing really slowly, and I think it has to do with them getting shaded out. 
that's one thing that I've noticed is that all of my apples are shaded out kind of really early in the afternoon, so they're only getting maybe five, six hours of sun, which is enough. They're healthy and they're happy, but yeah. they're not really having that vigorous boom. Oh, I can tell you right now, like, this year is a major handicap right here. Two tree. Did come around? Down here? Oh, no. Yeah, like half the life is oh is, no i didn't even see that you think this is a critter or something else i don't know i don't it doesn't i don't know and i've seen and i've visited trees here in redlands um next door where the summer well again now we're on the north side of the plant so i would say this is more girdling not sun damage yeah um but it was like the entire primary trunk was all dead wood and you can see the beetles and termites that are eating the inside, but they're still harvesting a solid two to 300 apples a year. Yeah. So I'm like, we're still gonna continue whitewashing your plant just to keep the beetles and termites at bay so we can hopefully um, extend the longevity of the supporting structure. But otherwise, I mean, the plant's health has definitely been shortened. Um, but you can see over here, I mean, this is something you're gonna wanna whitewash and then monitor over the next couple of years. Hopefully it's gonna heal over. It will as it continues. Grow. I'm remembering my one of my kiddos drove a remote control car into this. No, that's this is like this is like I don't know, he was, was driving kind of fast. This is like <laughs> chewing damage. Like <laughs> when it comes to girdling, if it was a rodent, it would be um typically a winter phenomenon. So when there's no fruits and mm. no seeds, that's when they typically resort to chewing on a tree. So this is something that could have happened, you know, four to six months ago. Yeah. And it's kind of in line. I mean it looks like it, it you know, it, it's since tried healing with the spring growth. You can see the cambium tissues have since expanded and trying to heal over it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, we'll have to get this. But girdling for us in Southern California is predominantly winter time. Like now the rats are hungry. They'll start chewing on the tree to get to the underlying saps and sugars of the plant, so. Well, the reason I wanted to show this one was because this doesn't hardly have any canopy on it. And the reason I whitewash this immediately, um, because I know you should whitewash, was because it's a young tree I want it. I know that they're so sensitive when they're first put in the ground and it doesn't have a lot of canopy to protect the rest of it and so this has actually been out here like this for the two seasons it's been in the ground including the really really hot um, last, year's last year 115 itself. degrees yeah, yeah for a couple of days and it's still except for this thing down at the bottom which looks like some sort of rat or rodent activity yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't see that same sunburn. No, it's in wonderful condition. And you can see that the, um, I can see that the plant has grown. You can see the central leader. You have since pruned it off. It's created all these now lateral shoots. And now you're going to have a low growing canopy, which is going to be ideal, just as we saw with your other apples in the orchard, low lying apples that are easy for harvest and, you know, enjoyment. Yep. So this is one of those things where as I'm seeing spots uh, come out and Charles was nice enough to bring me some of the I have your organic uh, three-in-one plant guard to put on this. We already have done a couple of the other trees, but I want to show you um, in addition to this area right here, which we may come back and paint in a minute. Yeah, I, why, why don't we do that right now? Let me get the brush. Okay. All right, so Charles, you just noticed something. Yeah, so if you come around like this side over here, right where you can see here's the rootstock. This here is the grafted scion wood that was put onto that rootstock. And if you come over right in there, you can see right at that junction between the rootstock and the scion wood, there's a tunneling action happening either by beetle or termite action that's happening there. And there's some other splits you can kind of see throughout this entire region, even right where this last prune um, was created on the rootstock. There's a lot of cracks in here that need to be sealed. And eventually this tree needs to you know, continue growing and establishing health and it'll heal over all of these wounds. But it's gonna take a solid one to two, possibly three years with good health for it to heal over this can continue performing at optimal you know conditions you mentioned um, earlier that this tree is not as vigorous and as healthy as some other apple trees that you visited and I would say it's losing at least 50% of its resources because it's only surviving off of one side of the tree instead of you know capitalizing on you know pulling up the resources and the waters and the minerals from the earth and back and forth between the leaves back to the roots because this whole section of cambium tissue is lost. Yeah, I mean, those are all like lanes of a highway and we essentially have half the lanes shut down right now. Half of them are shut down. And so it's trying to still pull that stuff through and it's getting jammed up. Um, so the cool stuff about this as we were painting, I noticed, is that it's a really, um, it's a really thin mixture. Correct. The goal when whitewashing, whether it be if you're gonna do things chemically using a latex paint, or organically using the ivory organics. The goal is you're using something in the consistency of 50% of paint 
And by being also more water, you can actually apply more protection to more trees than if it were a thicker application. Less water will have something like 50%. The water we added to the can will give you more of that consistency of paint. But with having that full can of water, you're gonna have that 50% dilution ratio. And that can can also make up to 20 to 25 bottles. It's the equivalent of five gallons of foliar spray, which can give a total plant protection, a nice thin um, you know, sunscreen protection, just as you would do for your skin if you're gonna go out to the beach for more than 20 minutes. Your skin will start burning, and the goal is to do the same thing to the wood. As we're now here in June, we're going now up against 14 hours of daylight hours and also heat. And the goal is to offer the plant protection so it's not just combating sunburn, but instead can put its resources towards growth and eventually flowers and fruit. The reason I'm wearing this, uh, <laughs> this was handmade by Mrs. Busy Gardener. Um, and so I thought this would be a good time to bring it out when I'm working with paint because I seem to ine inevitably get paint all over myself. Um, so. The idea here is to just make sure that it's kind of stirred up well, right? Correct. And then grab some, and I'm going to just paint over this area. I want to close in on this so you can see it happening. And I want to make sure I'm going to be paying special attention to these, uh, where that borehole is. I'm going to go all the way around. Really, I'm just trying to cover all of these areas. Now, when we mixed this up originally, there was, uh, it wasn't just the paint solution, the color solution, but there were those oils in it as well. Correct. And those oils, like you're saying, are going to help keep out all the little critters from Yeah, both coming to insects and rodents. The oils are includes castor, cinnamon, cloves, garlic, peppermint, rosemary, and spearmint. And um, all of those plants are naturally pest-resistant plants, both from insects and rodents. Hey, um, there's another tree that I want to go take a look at, our mango. It's just been having some trouble. Let's go take a look at it. Let's do it. Okay, so we, we were walking over to our mango, and then I noticed these this Granny Smith apple... Uh, Charles noticed um, that it has some serious issues going on here. Now, it's not evident to me, Charles, although if I'm looking at the bottom, I notice that it's some serious trunk stuff going on at the very bottom there too. Yeah, take a look at, um, yeah, look at all this damage happening here. You can see that there's been some definite chew action happening here historically. It could have been six months ago, it could have been a year ago. It's The plant's been since trying to heal over. You can see the cambium tissues on the side are expanding. Over here, you can see if we can peel some of this dead bark off. You can see that the cambium tissues right there are expanding. Eventually, it'll heal over, um, but we gotta be active on this. You can see over here, dead wood and underlying, look at all that, dead wood that's coming off. But you can see the cambium tissues trying to heal over, but there's holes, there's tunneling action happening almost everywhere where beetles and termites are trying to get into that supporting wood. And the goal is we don't want this hollow tree. How many times have you seen trees topple over in the neighborhood and, and then you see that the whole inside of the tree is just hollow? Yeah. And it all happens, in my opinion, from a pruned branch, beetles and termites enter and then begin hollowing out the tree. Even one day those wounds can heal over, but it's been eaten out from the inside out pretty much. And the next wind just topples it over. So the goal is to preserve the heart of the tree being, you know, that inside wood supporting structure. And take a look at that tree's performance compared to, for example, this guy over here. Yeah. Um, the big difference when there's girdling happening to a tree and, and damage happening to the bark compared to this one over here that's got a protected tree trunk all the way from the base down. If you pull back on the bark, you can see this one's almost twice as thick. And again, through your excellent whitewashing practice, you can see that the plant health is doing way better, not just a more beautiful trunk, but a much beautiful, way better performing fruit tree at the end of the day. We've probably got about two dozen apples on this tree compared to the probably Ten, one dozen. Yeah, that's that's over here. So um, the goal is to protect it, manage it, mitigate disease, um, mitigate girdling, and, and the plant's gonna perform that much better. I noticed something too is that, so normally when you plant your trees, you want, uh, you never want the soil level to go above the graft. You always want the graft to be above the soil. And I Correct. noticed that the mulch, when it got applied, I had somebody else come in through here and apply the mulch. And I noticed that the mulch was applied over, or kind of the graft, what appears to be, because I'm having trouble finding the graft. Either this is the graft or the graft is happening here. Yeah, so here we're getting now to the surface roots. You can see the roots that are working their way into the, um, the mulch. And I mean, my guess would be the graft is yeah. over here. This is the root stock. This here is the scion wood. Um, and the goal whenever mulching your plant is to pretty much have close to zero mulch at the level of the tree, like where the tree is in the soil, and to basically build the mulch up as you work your way out into the drip zone of the tree. So it's gonna start off low. We're gonna cover up these roots. 
that were growing into the mulch. We don't want those roots to be exposed, but we're going to then basically create a berm that's about two to three inches thick as we work our way into the um, basically drip zone of the, of the fruit tree. Yeah, we have a really healthy mulch layer here. Pro right now, probably six solid six inches, four to six inches here. Yeah. But you need to make sure that you are pulling that away from your, the trunk of your tree. You don't want that stuff covering, because I think that contributed to it. I noticed there was some moisture underneath that, and I know that that was... The gardening concept's known as now stem rot. So the mulch is absorbing water, as is the bark. The bark is also dead wood, mm -hmm. as is these wood chips. And together, they're just absorbing too much water, and that leads to stem rot. We know that root rot is when there's like too much water in the soil and um, and under you know poor aerated conditions or poor drainage conditions, it'll lead to root rot. Depending, especially on, on, on fruit trees that are very sensitive to too much water on the roots. So root rot's below the ground. Stem rot is where um, it's just too much moisture against the stem. So you're going to want to make sure you keep those wood chips away from the tree trunk, um, and then again build that gradual thicker layers as you get around the drip zone of the fruit tree. I'm gonna use this right now. I'm gonna to apply to all of this area. This is the same situation where about half of the, the bark and that cambium layer are all at least half. Yeah, all the dead wood, you're gonna to wanna to get that out. Dead stuff, my goodness. Yeah, there it's and it's pretty significant. Yeah. And yeah, knocking all of this stuff off. So that way what we're sealing is just this the healthy wood. So I'm convinced there's a critter that's enjoying chewing on your trees and enjoying the underlying you know, sugars that they're getting from these trees. And more likely than not, it's a, it's, a, it's a winter phenomenon that's happening here in your garden. So for you, I would seriously consider that next year, late fall, to reapply and re-whitewash your plants, not for the protection you're gonna get from um, just winter sun scald, but to protect your plants and make sure that all the oils are there, the castors and the mints, um, the spearmint, peppermints are there, which are all anti-rodent mm -hmm. repellent um, protection, and to make sure you basically are whitewashing a plant for the anti-rodent um, protection that it'll offer your trees. Yeah, rodents don't want winter fresh breath. As no, it they turns don't. Out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have a, I have like a wildlife cam, one of those, you know, yeah, that yeah. you just set it and forget it kind of things. And I'm seriously going to set it up over here and see if anything <laughs> comes and tries to sniff around. That's I wouldn't be surprised. We, we have a lot of wildlife here, lots of different, like we have opossums and we've got squirrels and we've got rats and we've got mice and we've got birds and we've got um, raccoons and so lots of different types of wildlife um, all of the other stuff too bobcats and mountain lions although oh, they're sure. not interested in fruit trees so as I get this and really I want to cover every bit of this so that way there isn't some bug that finds you know some way into the middle of this tree and bypasses all of this paint we're trying to create as good a seal as we can right every Correct. You're going to want to uh, yeah, fill that in as good as you can. I'm going to get my brush now and I'm going to help you. We're going to continue um, adding a more thick coat. I know you've whitewashed this in the past, um, but we'll add a, a second coat protecting the tree trunk, the lower branches to make sure that again, the tree trunk and the lower branches will be supporting, you know, many years and hopefully decades of, 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 of fruitful, productive years. Yeah. And none of this, None of this has been painted. So even though it's whitewashed with paint, it hasn't, it doesn't have the benefit of those oils and those things that are going to deter pests and some different things. So that's what we're really adding to the top of this here is um, the benefit of all of those oils as well. Even though we're, we're adding the color for this whitewash, but we're also adding those oils. The oils are most beneficial aside from these girdling zones. Wherever there's a pruned area, again, the goal is to keep the pests out. So wherever there's like a pruned spot such as this I can see your central leader you pruned it off at this point over here on the very top yep and by pruning it you've now encouraged all of this lateral growth happening so I'm now also going to be sealing the central leader prune to also keep again pests and disease especially again those termites and beetles from finding that exposed wood and beginning to bore into it and again I can see some more damaged wood as we get higher up into the branch I'm going to continue offering protection to all of those exposed wood areas. Okay, we just finished whitewashing this tree and it's there, I'm gonna let it kind of soak in a little bit and I'll come back and clean up a couple of the other spots. Correct. So this looks a lot better than it did. It now has all those oils repelling all the pests and so Man, it smells so nice. It is. It really does. It just kind of wafts. 
So sometimes that is that's another big difference is you used to smelling that nasty paint smell, and this is it's really nice. I would say it smells like a delicious Italian kitchen. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. Hey, you know, something um, that I think is important to understand is that you can do everything right as far as all of the techniques with these trees. You can put all the mulch, you can feed them, you can prune them well, you can prune off all the dead wood and all of this stuff. But if the sun comes out and burns it, that's gonna damage your tree. It's just like some critter coming out and chewing on it. The sun does it just a little bit more slowly, but it still has those kind of effects. And so That's a great point. And like I always say about even our own skin, if we're out in the sun, you know, 14 hours a day, we're approaching now, you know, first day of summer in a couple of weeks, you know, if we got 14 hours of sun on our bodies, doesn't matter what we're eating, what we're drinking, <laughs> right. like we're going to be burning, you yes. know, so, and, and, the, and the plant's going to exhibit that stress as well. So whitewashing is, I would say, really high up there with, you know, good fertilizer practice, a good watering practice, good mulching practice, whitewash your trees. Yeah. yeah. Let's go, let's walk over and take a look at this mango. We got a little sidetracked by that poor Granny Smith. And Granny wasn't looking so good. Yeah. So this is an interesting thing that uh, I discovered a few weeks ago, and I noticed that this strange girdling type effect was happening where the, the bark was being pulled back and receding. There was this big opening and it was starting to grow. I came through and cut off some of that just to create some lines. How do you think this even happened in the first place? Well, we had these huge eucalyptus trees, maybe you remember seeing in some of the older videos, where there were gigantic ones. And as they did that work, I know that one branch came down and hit part of the canopy of this that tree. would make sense and some of it may have come through and smacked this as well or bruised it or whatever else and, and since then I guess that was just some bark damage you've cleaned it up and this is now another excellent opportunity to now whitewash and protect you can see that there's no cambium tissue here the cambium tissue is that living green layer of tissue that underlies the bark of the tree this here is the underlying supporting wood so it's wood cambium layer and then bark and the goal is we're gonna protect the underlying wood so that beetles termites and other disease doesn't go and start weakening the overall structure of the plant and eventually the plant as it continues to grow will heal over that wound and it'll eventually disappear. You know the first thing that caught my attention was the foliage going bad on this. Now what is going on with that mango? It was looking so good and then all yeah. that's when I realized that this had happened and I'm sure that this is impacting the canopy up top. Well we've got to figure the flow of now water and nutrients from the ground and also from the leaves coming down to the roots. It's now being obstructed as you mentioned those lanes of you know um, like driving a on a freeway or lines on a highway, they, it's obstructed here. It's now going to go around the back as there's no obstruction here on the back side of the plant, but the obstruction is here on the front. So um, eventually the plant will heal over, but it's going to take a solid, I'd say, year, two years, maybe even three years for all of those lanes of highway to be rebuilt and hopefully no further damage, you know, going forward. Although I will note that incidentally, this is on the south facing side. So it's possible that this received some sort of, maybe got weakened by some sort of sun damage as well. It's not totally evident, but we're gonna, we're gonna paint this thing right now. I'll leave this here. We can maybe just at least clean this area we'll up. We'll do it together. Yeah. That's a great point. Usually when you see that the bark of a tree is exposed, it's typically on the south side in the Northern hemisphere, the sunny side of the tree as that'll typically cause the weaker bark and then eventually bark death and then the underlying wood to be exposed. So you'll typically see that on the south side of the plant, again, in the northern hemisphere. And so there's some pretty deep cracks here. And so do you recommend just dripping in the paint into those cracks? Yeah, just get it in there. Um, you can also allow it, once it dries for you know, 10, 20 minutes, you can come back and, and refill anything that you still see that um, should be patched up. But this protection will last a, a good year. If there's any reason to reapply it one more time in another six months, you can add a second coat. But a once a year application will be sufficient to, um, you know, protect the plant. And you can see all the growth since you last whitewashed. I should have pointed this out, but I just got the idea. You can still see it in this upper part. You can see all of that new bark um, growth as the plant has continued to expand. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the older paint has since fallen off. Um, another important reason, again, to be doing this organically so you don't end up with, you know, layers upon layers of latex paint in your soil. But you can see that as it's expanding, there's now new bark being exposed and another reason to be continuously whitewashing your trees at least once a year. But the heart of the tree being, if I can protect the, obviously I would call it like the main organ, the main yeah. part of the plant, being tree trunk, primary branches. If those are protected, if there's any sunburn or you know 
wind damage, broken branches that are outside of the heart of the plant, no big deal, I can prune those off and a new branch will regrow within the heart region of the plant. Um, and it's the heart that I'm hoping will last for decades. Whereas the other branches that come off the heart, no big deal if you know those die or die back or there's any injury or damage to those. Yeah, or you know what's one of the most dramatic things is when you come out and it's maybe been a really hot day and you notice that the scaffold, or sorry, the canopy of the tree, the foliage, is all burned and looks really bad and you freak out because you go, ah, it's dead. But it's like you want that foliage to take the hit so that way the wood. Still protecting the underlying structure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because that foliage is going to, a lot of these trees is going to drop off anyway. On average, on average, and some trees are different, but on average, the foliage is only going to last one year. This is your solar panel. It's there for only one year, and every year it's going to recreate new solar panels um, to take over, you know, you know, create new panels for creating the sugars and proteins and all the life-giving support that the tree needs. All right, we, we whitewashed this tree and it's looking pretty good. I mean, we've got most of the trunk all the way down to the bottom, definitely that affected area. All of the, the main supporting scaffolding is whitewashed and this looks really good. This hopefully is gonna give this mango a chance. Um, you were giving some instruction a second ago too about maybe during the hotter points of the summer coming through and either spraying on. Yeah, so the can you're holding makes up to five gallons of the foliar spray that Ivory Organics also has. There's this product as well that already comes in the ready to use spray bottle, but you're talking about like with the leaves wilting. Yeah. You can go and spray also the leaves. And if you come in a little closer, you can see, I don't want to spray the whole plant because it's a little breezy right now. And I don't know which way the wind's blowing. I don't want to end up with product all over us, but you can see that it's offering like a, you know, a milky, just as it would a sun screen protection mm -hmm. to the plant so that the sun beating on the plant, especially during the extremes, won't be as great. So you don't just need to whitewash the tree trunks, lower branches, you can whitewash the entire structure. And this is gonna be a lot thinner, you know, protection. And you can also get into like, you know, the, the little branches and stuff. It would otherwise be impossible to get a brush in between. Especially with these subtropicals that have such tender skin, really. It almost looks like skin more than bark yeah. compared to some of the more deciduous, hardier things like avocado, um, this mango, citrus can be like this where it's totally green and can get burned so easily. So having that spray on there is pretty helpful. Correct. But one thing I want to share that if it's 115 degrees, you said here, and it was 117 degrees at my house last summer, that whitewashing your plant doesn't change the temperature of the air, right? Yeah. So whitewashing still offers the protection from, again, summer sunburn, winter sun scald. But if it's 117 or 115 degrees, the plant is still in the oven at 115 degrees and it's still going to have to deal with that stress mm -hmm. of the temperature but the goal is you're not dealing with all of this exposed skin yes. bark from taking a direct beating so you'll notice that even if your plant has to go through one of these extremes the um it'll bounce back it'll rejuvenate itself a lot faster than if it took the beating directly than it otherwise would with the protection of whitewashing yeah that's a really good way to say it yeah okay. This has been such an awesome time. I, you know, we've got so many things we could do. We're, we're even short on time. Our wives are calling, where are you guys? We're here playing around in the orchard. So, um, Ivy Organic, if you've not been part, over to their channel on YouTube, go look them up, you hit subscribe, you like it, and, you, and you're gonna be posting a video of some other stuff we did in here. Correct, we um, visited the Urban Gardener before this educational lesson, so be sure to check out that and um and i really appreciate your time and again i'm always going to give you credit for being the master of whitewashing uh, as you've been whitewashing your trees almost a solid decade before ivory organic never put up its first whitewashing educational video so um, i'm always going to give you credit for having you know embraced the concept and the value whitewashing brings to your plants and trees well i've been i've been uh following ivy organic on youtube for a number of years now well the years that you've been on youtube and they've got um, what we've been using today, this whitewash, the, the color white, you've got it in brown, you've got it in green. Also in green. Um, something we didn't get have time to get to in today's video is... Yeah, I was hoping. I know. Fertilizer. <laughs> you guys have a website though. What's the best way to, to find you guys? So you go to ivyorganics.com and there in regards to the fertilizer, there's the six macros plus fertilizers, super and premium blend fertilizers that give your plants all the macronutrients, six macronutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, that NPK you'll find in pretty much all the fertilizers, but what's lacking in pretty much all the fertilizers is the magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. And plants need six macronutrients and six macros plus 
has it all. Yeah, in pretty good quantity too. Correct, we've got the 11.8 ounce bag that I'm holding. This here, a tablespoon to a gallon makes 20 gallons of liquid fertilizer for your plants. Or the four pound bag, 120 gallons of liquid fertilizer. So yeah, we, we've got those two you know, varieties in two different um, brands, being again, the super and premium blend fertilizers. Hey, well, this has been so huge. I wanna thank you for tuning in. If you've not yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to do it. Hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can be notified when we're posting new content. I try to do that about once a week. And uh, Charles, thank you so much. Oh, this was too much fun. Thanks for having me. Whether you've got one tree in your orchard or 500, until next time, stay busy. Stay busy and happy gardening.